Gutter Trash is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Joshua Goldschmidt knows the only way to end World War II. Assassinate Hitler. Gathering together seven insane men to accomplish an insane mission. To go behind enemy lines in Seven Psychopaths. Jason, what's up, big money hustler? How you doing, Sugar Bay? I'm doing all right. Yeah? <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> I, like, I like it when my Sugar Bear's doing good. The one and only. Right, of course. Yeah. You're my only uh, big money hustler. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. As well as it should be that way. Indeed. <clears throat> You feeling all right? Ah, uh, man, I uh, don't know what happened. Uh, I think you were attacked by a Pepsi Max. I think so. Oh, man, I still haven't found my bearings yet. Your, your who? My bearings. Oh, I think you said your Marion's. No. Wow, that's no, weird. No. I think I was thinking about pizza earlier. Yeah, yeah. Marion's is the local pizza place here. It is a local pizza yeah. place. Oh, yeah. Not the you, local. No. no. Yeah. There's better. They're good. Yeah, yeah. They're fine. Oh, yeah, they're good. Yeah. <clears throat> our, our friend Joe apparently has an issue with uh, with uh, the Godfather's pizza. Which is... Insane. It's hard for me to imagine that. He must have right. just had a... Like, I know I've had bad experiences at good restaurants the first time oh, I've been yeah, there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what happened. The first time you went. Yeah. Bad experience. But he said he prefers Corleone's. That's a really good pizza. It's a good pizza. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but not as good as Godfather's. No. No. Not at all. There's hardly any pizza as good as Godfather's. Eh. Hardly. Not in Dayton. I'd say Joe's is a really... Joe's? Really. Yeah. Really. Man, I don't know. That's a... I'd say Joe's number two. You think? Yeah. Under Godfather's? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not sure that and, I... And I say that fully aware that Godfather's is just a chain. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe's is local mm-hmm. <clears throat> local only restaurants pizza joe's joe's oh yeah tops oh yeah. yeah yeah uh but then again you know nothing beats chicago pizza mm-hmm. more on that later folks yeah <clears throat> welcome, <clears throat> back to, welcome back to pizza talk welcome back to pizza talk i'm pepperoni big hub money hustler <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, extra cheese sugar bear. <laughs> Over to my left. <laughs> you gonna walk us around the room? Um, I think that was it. It was just us two. Okay, talk about the weather outside. <laughs> uh, I think it's about uh, negative thirty degrees out. Uh, no, it's not that cool. What? I was like, what? I didn't dress properly. <clears throat> Neither did I. I'm naked. Hmm. Folks, it's been like a month since we've done this. Oh, God. This, this is why this is why we're not good. We uh, <clears throat> got off track. It has been a while since <clears throat> me and you did one. At least. Yeah, yeah, it's been like three weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, if mm-hmm. not more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, hmm. yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't know how to podcast with uh, with you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we we've lost our rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Now's a good time as any then to just stop. Just to end it all. Yeah. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing gutter trash. I'm just going to do it with Joe from now on. All right. Yeah. Well, I heard it was... I haven't actually listened to the episode yet. <laughs> it was going to be the, the first episode I've listened to in <clears throat> months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Years. Years, yeah. Years. But uh, they haven't got around to it yet. Yeah. I, I listened to it. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Yeah. 
I like you guys. Yeah, I like us guys too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we like you. <clears throat> so Even though welcome it, back. Oh yeah, thanks. Welcome it's, back. It's good to be back. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh I had some I've got some excuses. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna Some of your excuses are shitty. Really? No. Oh yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. None of them are shitty. Yeah. None of them are shitty, they're all legitimate. Yeah. One of your excuses is shitty. <laughs> Which one? Uh the reason why I had to do the uh, the last show with Joe. Because I had to work. Oh, yeah. Before that. Because yeah. mm. we were originally supposed to do something completely different than uh, Green Hornet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't even remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. You, you, you decided you wanted to go to Columbus instead, even though I told you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's all that all worked out. Yeah. yeah. And then when, when we figured out what was going on, then yeah. Yeah. He had to work because apparently you're the only employee at Mavericks who, uh, <coughs> who works when they're sick. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I was really sick this week. <laughs> Holy, what the hell? Why didn't anybody cover for me? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, we, when the other people are sick, if there's, a, yeah, that's the thing about working at a small shop where there's only five people. Right. Uh, if somebody's sick, chances are everyone else that works there is either going to be in school or working their other job because because right. that that's the way the way it is. Right. So, so yeah, I get I get. Like I had a fifty-hour week, and uh, and you know, I mean, it's fifty hours at a comic book shop, but still, yeah. it doesn't leave me any time to do anything. You don't really want to spend fifty hours anywhere. Oh right? yeah, no way. Yeah. yeah, not not in one place. And like fifty hours, like if fourteen-year-old me, you're like, you want to work fifty hours at a comic book shop? I'm right. like, in three days, sure, I could do it. Yeah, you know, like in a week, I could do a hundred. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, after 19 years of working at a comic shop, 50 right. hours a week is a little more than I want to be there. Understandable. So, but yeah, I didn't mind because uh, someone else was sick, but uh, I ended up having to work while you guys went to see the Green Hall in it. Yeah, yeah. And I hear it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Look forward to seeing it again in 2D. Yeah. On video. See, no, that's how I want to watch it. On video? Yeah. In 2D? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. we... Yeah, you, you you didn't have such a great experience at a, at a movie theater recently, did you? Yeah, n- not and and by recently you mean in the last like, like six today. months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I meant in the last six hours. Well, yeah, especially especially. <laughs> now. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I guess six months. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. That seems to be your luck. Yeah, it's been a while. What happened? It used to be my luck. Yeah, you gave it to me. It's like some <laughs> sort of dirty STD. It's been sitting too close to you here in the room. Uh, yeah. Well, just yeah. imagine. Look forward to this. Mm-hmm. I'd say within the next couple months, I'm probably going to get me one of them fancy phones that uh, that uh, the kids all seem to love. Oh, yeah, they love them. Phones. Yeah. And I'm going to be sitting there with you in a movie theater just texting away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tweeting. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, like, introduce the characters as they appear on the screen? Sure. To someone else sitting next to you? Character or actor? Either both, probably. Yeah, both. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard some of both. That's Harrison Ford. He's playing Han Solo. <laughs> That's uh, for when we go see Star Wars in 3D. Oh, they're doing that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. That's awesome. Yeah. No, it's not awesome. Because <laughs> I'm sure there'll be something else tweaked to. Uh, maybe, maybe Han will shoot first again. Hey, that'd be something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be something to look, yeah. All that 3D chess game will look awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or not. No, or probably not. Because it's a a 30-some-year-old movie that is being converted to 3D when it was not meant to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to look asshole. Maybe they'll just reshoot everything. Oh, yeah. In 3D. Just, uh, yeah, I guess uh, George Lucas wants to replace, uh, or wants to make movies with dead actors now, so maybe he's just got, like, a... CG versions of like all the original cast, and he'll just uh, redo the movie wow. entirely yeah. as, a, as a CG movie. Why not? I mean, yeah, the technology is clearly there. No, clearly there. Yeah. We all saw Tron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seamless. <laughs> no, that, I loved Tron, but it was a little. Some of the like old young Jeff Bridges stuff was a little off putting. It was very off putting. One would say frightening. Yeah, at least when he's in the in the quote unquote real world. Like in at least in the 
you know, in the uh, in the grid. The grid. It was acceptable. I could accept it more in the grid if everyone was like that. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it is a computer world. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. You're right. It is freakier when, when like, that opening scene when he's talking to, to his kid. Yeah. And it's, it's like this abomination. You, know? <laughs> and you see him, like, getting closer to the kid. And you're like, run away! <laughs> Jump out the window. <laughs> Don't even grab your Tron toys. <laughs> Forget about Bruce Box Ladder. Just get out of there. Oh, man. Indeed. Movies are fun. Movies are fun. Mm. I like mm. movies. <laughs> um, I also like comics. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm an okay fan of comics. Yeah? Yeah. I think you're more than okay. Eh. You support the scene. You, uh, you know. I want to like comics yeah. a lot. I don't find a lot to like. Hmm. I don't find really? much interest anymore. I love the comics. I'm, uh... <clears throat> yeah, I just, uh... I don't know. I just, uh... You know, I'm tired of seeing, uh... You know, image comics about, like, some sort of cyber ninja that, uh... You know, uh... You know, finds out that his past is all of a lie. And, right. Oh, uh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah, and I'm tired of seeing, you know, scantily clad witch women, you know, uh... Fight, uh, fight good or evil, uh, but from the opposite side of right. that equation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I agree. I, I think I'm largely, uh, like, uh, like I either want it to be funny, or I want it to be slice of life. Like right. that's like the only two things I'm really enjoying lately. Like, uh, I mean, Sweet Tooth is like the one that doesn't really fall into that category. Right. But out of everything else, I, j- I just get kind of bored if it's not funny. Like, I don't, you know, I don't mind fiction, like science fiction or action, if it's right. funny. If it's not funny, then uh, it kind of loses me. I don't want funny, per se, but I want fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want something that doesn't take itself too seriously. That's the key. That's the key. It really pushes the boundaries of, you know, like, you know, what comics can be. Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously I know, like, like, you know, everything's already been done under the sun, but, you know, there's always unique takes on things, you know? A little twist, a little spin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, like, uh, like, I know you don't, you know, I think I kind of told you a little bit about this, uh, Eric Powell released his, uh, his manifesto you know, the oh, other day, yeah, yeah. how uh, people need to see support uh things other than superhero comics and i mean he has a very good point Mm -hmm. uh but you know like go through any previews catalog and 98 percent of all the stuff that is not you know in the 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 front of the book is all bullshit (laughs) there's a lot of like there's like that two percent that is amazing yeah. And, and I'm sure that, that, you know, some of that is stuff that, like, you wouldn't even look twice at. Right. But, like, you know, it's like this little hidden gem that's just sitting back there that, that will never get hyped, will never be known. But, you know, it's going to be overshadowed by the big guys and the other 98% of the crap. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a, there's some stuff that's not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> there's a lot of, uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of just like no name publishers or self publishers that think they have a clever name. And, right. You know, it, it all looks like, uh, like if it doesn't look like stuff that came out like in the 90s when the image yeah. hit big, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, people telling autobiographical stories who should have no excuse to be doing autobiographical mm. stories. And that's the stuff I read. <laughs> no, no, because I mean, you read some good stuff, and I've, I've said before that I'm, I'm backing down on my right. anti-autobiographical stance. Nice, nice. But <laughs> there's there's a lot of it that's kind of boring. It seems like uh, pretty much if you have any interest in comics and you don't want to do superheroes and you really don't want to do any kind of fiction, 
that you just really do a crudely drawn autobiographical story about how your day went when you went to go buy bread. Oh, or about making comics. I've read, yeah. I've seen so many autobiographical comics about making comics right. that I've like intentionally tried not to ever put it in mine. Right. Like, you know, like I try to never show myself drawing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah. but I mean, you know, it's like you also have, uh, the occasional interesting experience to share. And, uh, some of these people don't, uh, you know, but I like that. I like, honestly, I love, I love most biographical comics, even if they're kind of boring and they're badly drawn and they're just talking about making comics. Like, well, then that sounds awful. Why do you enjoy I, that? I don't know. I think it's like the voyeur. <clears throat> I think we've, we've talked talk about, about that. that. Yeah, I, yeah. I love just seeing how, like what people put forth of their own life, like what view, right. like even if it's like an uninteresting, like cross section where they you know, they probably have something interesting to talk about, but they pick something maybe that's not so interesting. Right. Like, I'm just curious, like, you know, the version of themselves that they want to put out there for people to read. I'm just curious about that for some reason. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I don't mind reading autobiographical stories, especially if, like, it's about something interesting that has happened to the person that is mm. not something I've ever experienced. That's, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know what? That's entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm reading this shit for. Yeah. <laughs> If I, if I want to, you know, read about, uh, you know, somebody's boring day, then I'll fucking write my own. <laughs> All right. And well, you know, that, you know, honestly, when I was a kid, the first time uh, I read anything by Harvey Picar, because my brother had a bunch of uh, the old, like, magazine-size American Splendors. Right. And he was like, oh, if you like Chester Brown, you'd probably like this, because, you know, Chester Brown was doing some auto bio stuff. And I was like, okay. And I read it, and I was like, this is so boring. I was like, literally, I read a story where he goes and gets, he fills his car up with gas, uh, right. and then he, like, just drives away after he fills the car up, and I was like, this is retarded, who would read this? But then, like, years later, you know, like, I kind of like that slice of life stuff, even, <clears throat> even if nothing's really going on. Right. I will say Harvey Picar, because uh, I read some of his uh, more recent uh, American Splendor stuff, the the stuff that uh, Vertigo published. Yeah, 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 and I really enjoyed those. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think because he has a unique point of view of just being, you know, a curmudgeon. Yeah, that really makes his boring stories interesting. Right. Yeah, they don't seem. <clears throat> yeah, they don't seem as banal. Yeah. Or... But you know, that's also him coming from you know. 60 years of, of life experience and also being famous, uh, instead know, of being, having unique experiences. Instead of being 20 and like having a Kinko's card. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting genre though. Yeah. Like yeah. all the other ones. I mean, there's like such a diverse superhero. Right. And you know, yeah, nothing against superheroes. Uh, there's good and bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lot more bad than there is good, but I think that's with everything. Oh, yeah. 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 That's why you gotta, it's fun to, like, find the good stuff. You weed, yeah, weed yeah. through the crap. It's like sorting through a quarter bin at a comic shop, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you're gonna pass, like, 800 books that you don't want before you find something that you're like, oh my god! Right, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's always like that. Wow, that reminds me, uh, Patton Oswald, uh, comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe you've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, put out a, uh, he put out a manifesto. Oh, really? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, how nerd culture needs to go away. Uh, <laughs> and his point mostly is that, you know, when he was growing up as, 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 a, as a young, you know, closeted nerd, that uh, in order for him to find the stuff that he really loved... Like, like it was effort. Like, like he had to like talk to friends and he had to like, you know, go out and like, you know, experiment, you know, read this book, read that book, find out, you know, which stuff is good and which stuff is crap. Right. And, you know, separate the wheat from the chaff, which I think is an actual quote from his manifesto. And, uh, like, like his whole point is that, you know, now with the internet and everything is right at our, uh, you know, fingertips right. that, uh, you know, you can go on Wikipedia and find what other people say is the best stuff. And then you can avoid all of the bad stuff. It's true. And he said, basically that just makes weak nerds. Yeah. Yeah. 
Plus, like, the quote-unquote bad stuff might not always be bad. You know? Right, it's all opinion. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but yeah, it should be up to you to decide what is good and what is bad. And, it's true. You know, uh, you know, just like life, you have to figure out the, the, the mistakes. Yeah. That's what makes the good stuff that much better. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But hmm. at this point in time, I'm just done with comics. <laughs> have you read any recently? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I read The Occultist today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I read. Is uh, that a Vertigo thing? Uh, it was Dark Horse. Okay. Um, I read uh, Hack Slash one shot that came out. Oh. Pardon me. No, you're pardoned. Um, what else have I read? Um, yeah, that's all I've read recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spooked. Like in the past two weeks? Yeah. yeah that's all I've read. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, I guess when we were going to do a comic podcast today. Huh. Yeah, yeah. We review Well, it. we didn't watch a movie. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I did pick the comic. Oh, yeah. It's a book I read three weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of my fault, but not all. Uh, we, had a, we had a week off. Yeah, yeah we had a week off. Mm-hmm. But that was so you could read the comic. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were... Out of town. We were out of town. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Seven Psychopaths. You're holding it up. I don't remember what the cover looks like. There it is. It's a big number seven. It's a big number seven. It's got the slash through the seven. I love the slash. I do that. I always use the slash. Fuck yeah. yeah. I use that in Z's too. Same here. Yeah. Dude. Fuck yeah. All right, man. Slash is awesome. Have you heard that solo on Sweet Channel Man? <laughs> That's why I do it in honor of him. I used to draw a top hat on every single character in my oh, comics wow. yeah, yeah. as a you know sort of a right, right. homage too. But then you know yeah. started confusing characters because you couldn't see their hair. Well, yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or their eyes, or their eyes. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven psychopaths. Seven psychopaths. Boom. Studios published it. Yeah. Uh, Written by Fabian Vellman, I guess. Um, yeah, I and hope. Uh, Sean Phillips drew it. Mm. Uh, tasty, tasty indeed. Originally published in France. Mm. Francais, Francais, en Francais. Uh, finally, I guess years ago. Yeah, a, a few, few years, years ago, back, maybe two or three years. Finally translated into uh, American. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. That's what we read here. We only read American. <coughs> and uh, available for the first time in the United States. Didn't they? They released this as single issues first, yes, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. Our, uh, our friend Joe uh, read them. Oh, the that's right. Issues. That's yeah. how I heard about this. Yeah. And I was going to get the single issues, but I said, fuck it, I'll just wait for the trade. You like, say that a lot. I like trades better. If if there was a toy of Eric where it only said like seven phrases, I think "fuck it, I'll wait for the trade" would be one of right, the right. seven phrases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, no, yeah. Uh, probably just say "fuck it." Yeah, That'd yeah. Be a separate phrase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you only pull a string halfway or something. Like that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, there is a reason I am purposely avoiding talking about this book because it's been like a month since you've read. Yeah, I don't remember a thing. Yeah, well, you gotta remember something. I remember uh, like the big plot of it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, there's a crazy guy, like an old guy. Uh, he, he's uh, <laughs> I know I can't remember any of their names. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Even if I'd read this yesterday, I couldn't. remember Well, yeah, I was say I read it like in the last two or three days. Yeah. <coughs> um, it's a World War Two comic. Mm-hmm. Takes place. In, late thirties, uh, forties, yeah. late thirties, early forties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, England in the midst of uh, the war. Uh, you know, uh, is is uh, trying to figure out how to uh, stop Hitler, basically. And uh, uh, there's one army general? military guy, general. I think he's a general. I don't know. I can't remember. I think he's a general. Okay. And he gets laughed at. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Why? I don't know. Uh, 
this is all going to go in the, the, uh, the opening thing. The opening yeah. Thing. yeah, we don't need to tell you. You've already yeah. heard it. But yeah, basically, uh, okay. I, I I usually wait until uh, you say what you think. Okay. You mean to just pop it out here? Yeah, you go. I really liked this. Okay. And like, like moments ago, I was talking about how I only like stuff that's either funny or you're out of bio, and this is definitely not either. No. <clears throat> but it's I, fun, though. Yeah, it's very fun. I mean, you know, as fun as a, a World War Two comic about Hitler can get. Mm, right, yeah. yeah. About assassinating Hitler. Yeah. yeah, yeah, without without being done by, like, Evan Durkin or something. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, Which, that would be amazing. Yeah. I'd love to see Evan Durkin do a graphic novel about assassinating Hitler. That would be kind of cool, yeah. It's, it's got a, uh, like, I, I don't remember when... Or I don't know when this was originally published, but uh, there's a definite uh, inglorious bastards feel to the uh, the story. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just sort of that uh, you know, lots of uh, big plans going awry, and then uh, in a lot of ways, it's almost like a like a heist movie. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, because you get like that Ocean's Eleven kind of crowd. Right, right. You get all these different people together. There's seven. There's seven of them. <laughs> In Ocean's Eleven? No, I'm pretty sure there was like 10 or 12. Uh, no, there was 13. 13 of them? Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see. George Clooney. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. No, let's not do that. Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, and that's the cool thing about this, or one of the cool things, I think, too, is like, it, it has that montage of right. like putting all the characters together. It reminds me of uh, like Mask right, right. or like Bloodsport or something, or, you know, just... Some, something where you see all these different people and then, like, they're all being recruited into one team. I always love that in stories, like, sp- especially in cartoons. It seems like yeah, there's a lot yeah. of that, but, um, yeah, just, like, I don't know, A-Team or yeah, any yeah, of that kind yeah. of... I, I feel you. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I love that. That's fun. Yeah. There needs to be more of that. There needs to be. There's team building. Team building. Yeah. It's fun. So yeah, I think I like this comic. You don't remember hating it. I don't remember hating it. I do remember while reading it, I had no idea who the characters were. Yeah, it was confusing. Uh, like they they kept mentioning characters by name, like towards like the middle, towards the end. You know, like all the things that happened to each one of them. And I was like, who was that guy again? Yeah. yeah. I, I literally had to go back and look and I was yeah. like, which guy was that? Right. Yeah. A couple of times. I mean, they do a good job with some of them. I mean, there's like clearly, you know, two or three characters who stand out. Yeah. yeah like yeah. The, there's the old man with long white hair and there's the giant guy with a burnt face and there's a woman. Right. And yeah. then there's like the other four. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember the guy with the crazy hair. Because uh, uh, something uh, happens to him that uh, is actually kind of hilarious. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. The way he, uh, yeah, because things go wrong in this book from the get go. Oh yeah, like like uh, like once they've assembled the team and then like you know they're enacting the plan, uh, it all falls to shit. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. yeah, like I was like I was like oh this might be kind of boring just to watch seven people like parachute and uh, right, yeah. but yeah that, it never gets anywhere near that that part. It just like <laughs> everything goes wrong and there's. Like, I don't want to say there's twists and turns, but, I mean, so many things happen in this that I would never have expected to happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, even, like, from the, the, the beginning, like, from the first issue, like, even, like, through, like, most of the second part, because uh, it's a three-issue series. Mm-hmm. Uh, trade paperback, folks. Read it. Yeah. Uh, I got a burp. Oh. He is over there. Damn it, I don't. Oh. Fuck. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> yep, wait a minute. Do you have to say sorry when you almost burp or when you say... The F word. Uh, I have to apologize when I think I'm going to burp and then don't. Oh, uh, okay. Because everybody's then expecting the burp. Yeah. And so I'm apologizing uh, to Joe okay. for, for bracing himself. Oh, yeah, he's probably covered his ears. Right, or, right. Or uh, held his uh, warm blanket or whatever right, he does right, right. whenever you burp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, Two issues. In the so yeah, like 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 just the way that it starts, and and then the the way that like the, like the montage, the team building, and everything. Like I really thought it was not going to be. I definitely did not think it was going to end up where it did. Oh yeah, how and, could you? Right. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I thought it was going to be uh, kind of dry. 
Yeah. Like, like it was just like, here's these guys. They did this thing. And then they failed, obviously, because, or, or unless they went to the uh, Inglorious Bastards route. And... Well, yeah, as soon as you see some a story that's set in World War II, it, it's kind of safe to assume it's going to be a little dry. Right. U- usually. Yeah. But, yeah, Inglorious Bastards was a, uh, you know, an exception. And I right, think this right. one was, too. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, there is a fascination with World War Two that uh, I think a lot of people can can make interesting fiction out of. Mm-hmm. But unless you go complete, like uh, you know, alternate universe and like drastically change events that you know actually happen, you know, you know the outcome of World War Two. Right. I mean, there's yeah, there's been so many thousand stories with that setting. It's right, it's, right. It's just hard to want to read another one right, or right. to see another one. I think it's neat for comics because it's, I mean, up until I think within the past, eh, I don't know, did the war comics of uh, like the, the Silver Age, did they like do uh, World War II stories? I think, I think so. I think so. Uh, so, yeah, I guess it has been milked pretty much. Uh, uh, yeah. I haven't seen as much in comics. I, I, I never really read a whole lot of war comics, but... I never read any old ones, but then uh, when I became a fan of uh, Garth Ennis, he started doing oh, a yeah, lot of them. And like so Battlefields I, and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, he did uh, Enemy Ace miniseries, and he did the... Yeah, uh, yeah. The Rifle Brigade. The Rifle Brigade, which that, was that, that was my favorite. Uh, and uh, he did, the, I think, the War Stories series. There's like eight oh, yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those were good, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I was reading some of his. I don't think I've read any other. Like, I've never read any Sergeant Fury and Italian Commandos or anything like that. EC Frontline or whatever. Right, yeah. I don't think I've read anything. No no Sergeant Rock and the Easy Company. Oh. Uh, I like like that all for the Justice League cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Easy Company. Easy Company. Sergeant Rock. (laughs) Was it Scream Soldier? He's on the Justice League cartoon? Yeah. Wow. Uh, the most uh, the, the most recent ones that are, have been uploaded. Oh, okay. Uh, have all been set in World War Two. Okay. And uh, her uh, episodes of League Night, the the other uh, got a Trash Family podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, it was uh, the last three episodes of season one of the Justice League. Uh, we reviewed them. They're up. Go listen to them. Uh, they all take place in World War Two. Uh, Green Lantern teams up with Sergeant Rock and the Easy Company. What more do I have to say? How about Hawk Girl teams up with the Blackhawks? Hey, wait a minute. Which podcast is this? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm here, so obviously it's not gutter trash. But, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm confused. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, like I said before, maybe I shouldn't have said funny. Everything has to be funny because yeah. this was definitely fun. Yeah, and like that's yeah, that's all. That's all a comic needs to be. It's it's fun should be. Yeah, you know, uh, if not fun, then uh, be super depressing. Yeah, like yeah, get some emotion out. Yeah, of yeah, like I either want to read <laughs> super fuckers or from hell. Like right, I yeah. want something. You know, <laughs> I want to cry because I'm either distraught or because i'm laughing so hard at superheroes smoking paint chips right right yeah <laughs> one or the other uh like uh you know like that guy that uh posts on uh nostalgia equals distortion and his uh vehement uh arguing against the fact that comics you know have any kind of emotion or depth you know they do it's just you know you gotta find the right ones oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure he's read some bad ones. Because, uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of them out there. There are a lot of bad comics out there. And also, I'm going to say, if you're looking for depth and emotion, uh, don't read anything with somebody dressed up as something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of a. Well, uh, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Secret Wars. Forget about Secret Wars. Okay, yeah, that it uh, invoked extreme hate yeah. out of me. Uh, and then extreme nostalgia out of me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, The Watchmen. Watchmen. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I mean, it was good. It was mm. really good. 
No, no extreme emotion. Though. No, yeah. You're just like, damn, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a, it was a fine piece of work mm-hmm. that is also currently in, in my adult years unreadable. Oh yeah. Maybe I should do that for nostalgia equals. Wow, so. there you go. Although that will take me six months to get through because I'll just keep getting frustrated. I'm like this is terrible. Just, just skip those like text pages with the files. It's not even the text pages. Really? Not even the text pages. Okay. Although I, I'm gonna have to say probably, I probably have never read those. Oh yeah, I remember slogging through them while I was like waiting for my mom to get her oil changed. I had borrowed my brother's Watchmen, and right. I was like a teenager, and I was like. What? Where are all these words in here? And I was like, <laughs> I read all the like files and everything, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm reading all this. Yeah. And I, I hated those pages because you know I was a teenager and I just wanted to right. see this crazy superhero comic that was going to depress me. Right. Uh, I think I read them at some point. I know that I, I it took me a lot to get through the pirate comic. Yeah. 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 Did I tell you my pirate joke? <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah. yeah. Seven psychopaths. Seven psychopaths. Yeah. Like, like, I don't remember too many details about it. Like I said, uh, easy to lose track of which character is which. They're all, they're all, I mean, they're all pretty distinct in what they do, though. Like, right. their specialties and, like, their quirks, I guess. But, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah, like... I mean, some of them kind of look similar, and their names are just un- unmemorable. Yeah, they're, you know? they're German or British. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I thought it, I thought it was super fun. Yeah. And it, I had no idea it was gonna go anywhere near like where it went, like the places right. it went. So uh, yeah, recommendation. Thumbs up. Thumbs indeed. And and how can you go wrong with Sean Phillips art? You can't. It's fucking great. He is awesome. Of course, we were just talking about how we can't tell his, his character's part, but uh, but uh, I don't think that's him. I think it's just like like you said, like they just mention their names once or twice, and right. there's no uh, I don't know. They they need name name tags. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think in all comics, everybody should wear name tags. Yeah. Hello, my name is Superman. I think uh, maybe they should uh, take the uh, the Chris Claremont route, and uh, every panel that they're on, yeah. they should have some sort of internal monologue <laughs> right. that is, uh, telling us who they are and what they do <laughs> and what their name is. Right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I'm like, what are you doing, Joshua? Are you putting this team of psychopaths together, General? What's his name, General Hod- 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 Hop- Hopscotch? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Good. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Joe, and Fabian, and Sean, and fine folks at Boom, Boom, and indeed. the country of France. Yeah, I think uh, is it Stan Lee part of Boom now? Yeah, I believe so. Mark Wade mm. does something. Oh, yeah, he does the, the Traveler, I think, or something. Irredeemable. Irredeemable. Or incorrigible. Incorruptible. <laughs> incorrigible. Incorrigible. That's the third series. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see something real quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's looking at the book right now. I'm looking at the book. You can't see this from where you're sitting. The book. But. There is the first page. I am looking at. Uh, this, is, this is good radio. Yep. All right. Never mind. I was going to say, you know, what with uh, Eric Powell releasing his uh, manifesto and everything, like apparently the 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 thing that that comic creators have have uh, come out and said, you know, like obviously they they don't uh, they're not saying you know all superhero comics are bad, you know, they're, they're just wishing that more creator owned books and non superhero books were were um, more out there, right. And I was going to say, here we are supporting a creator of a book, but I don't think that was. Oh, it wasn't? Yeah. But certainly not a superhero book. No. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and superhero books have their place, but yeah, it'd be like if every movie was an action movie. Right, you know? right. I love action movies. Yeah. I love horror movies. Exactly. You know, like uh, the movies I have, uh, you know, my Netflix uh, that, that just came in. Well, one of them's not a movie. It's a TV show. Mm-hmm. It's a Get Smart. It's a comedy. Mm-hmm. It's an old comedy. Old comedy. It's not an action movie or a horror movie. It's got some action. It's got some action. But it's not, yeah. 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 
And uh, then the other movie is like a really depressing drama. So, you know, I like variety. Yeah. Everybody likes variety. A little well-rounded. Some people say that is the spice of life. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I, like, I, re- I think Frank Herbert said that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Variety. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, he said that they interviewed him in Variety Magazine. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> he was just talking about the spice. He was talking about the spice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always get that confused. Uh, doing jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were doing jokes. You're right. <laughs> So we doing here? What are we doing here? Uh, oh man, flailing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, my point is that uh, you know, with all the things that happened, I looked. Uh, I looked through our uh, the history of Gutta Trash, and uh, out of one hundred, well, uh, since obviously half of uh, what we do are movies, uh, so out of sixty-four comic-related episodes of Gutta Trash. Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 Marvel, 8, or 12 DC, 8 Marvel. Uh, of those, only a handful of those are actually superhero books. Out of the rest, independent books, maybe three superhero books, almost all of them creator-owned or just random things. And that's not, like, purposeful. We just pick stuff that it's looks good. It's just what we yeah. pick. It's what we want to read. It's, mm-hmm. it's what's available to us. Right. It's what interests us. It's what others recommend. Right. And so, you know, they're, the, the creators are all saying that the fans need to, to get the word out about these creator-owned books that they like and, and stuff like that. I have a podcast. Up to six people listen. <laughs> Upwards of a handful. Yeah. Yeah. What more can I do? Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I work at a comic shop, and uh, occasionally when someone comes in and says, I haven't read comics in a while, uh, what should I read? Uh, and they're like, I'm like, what did you used to read? And they're like, I used to read Wolverine and X-Men. And I'm like, well, you'd probably still like this. Yeah. So I'm not really doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no I, always, I always try to be like, yeah, well, yeah, I've heard Old Man Logan's really good. Right. Um, if you like that, you might also like Invincible or, you know, Astounding Wolfman or... Right. or uh, you know, I, I, or preacher. I don't know. Yeah. I just try to, I try to give them give them a variety, right? Something that they might be familiar with, but also something that you know. And like you know, we we uh, we'll get into this later, but uh, we we were recently at some place where they had some pretty awesome comic shops, mm-hmm. and, and like those comic shops offered like a huge variety of, of material, uh, you know, and product available. And I know that Mavericks isn't exactly a uh, a huge store, and, right? You, you mostly rely on, like, sales of, like, sports cards and magic cards. Right. But but you do, you personally, I know, make an effort to order uh, things that, that are off the beaten path to, to have in the store. Right. And you can't order, like, the amount or the variety. I know. <laughs> but, but you do your best. And, and what's funny, too, about my collection is I own a lot of independent comics that I don't really want to own. But, like, in order to make it look like... Uh, we don't just sit on them forever. Right. Like you buy them. Yeah. About, about once a year I, I buy a giant stack of independent comics right. from our, from our work and I either just eventually plan to read them or I just shelve them or I give them away or right. because, because of, you know, if the owner sees like, you know, 20 independent trade paperbacks that I've ordered in like right. two months and none of them have sold, you know, it's not a, not a good time. No. And, and I mean, like, like, like the creators, you know, were were sort of blaming the readers for that, and there's a lot of fault to be laid at the feet of the readers, and obviously, like like a store like Mavericks, you know, uh, you, you don't have the the widest variety of comic fans. Yeah, that's 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 the yeah. that's saying saying yeah. the truth. So I mean, there's and those people, they're not going to listen to any recommendation that you have. That's you know. Not Marvel, not DC, or whatever it is they're reading. There's some that would, but some that yeah, would, but yeah, most the majority. Don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of our customers are pretty set in their ways, and yeah. they're not really willing to try something new or give up something old, right? And even if they don't like it. it. Yeah, right. yeah, which is so crazy. It's mind-boggling. Yeah. So you know, like, really, I guess in the end, there's no solution. Comics are gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Buy, uh, buy a computer. Buy a computer. Um, uh, you probably already got one because yeah. you're listening to an internet show. That's true. 
That is true. Of course, you're on an internet show. And I don't, don't have one. Yeah. It's saying something. Yeah. Uh, all right. There's, yeah, there's nothing more I can say. So, but, uh, but most of what you're talking about is reaction to uh, the feedback uh, that was sparked from Eric Cosman. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, like like it's just I, I don't uh, like yeah. Comic creators are blaming the readers, you know. Readers are blaming retailers or the publishers themselves, you know. And the publishers are really only just selling, you know, what they know makes money. Wow. You know, so it's like you know, it's this weird vicious cycle, and like nobody knows how to like come to any kind of like, conclusion. And, who can I blame? Because I am a reader, a retailer, and a comics publisher. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. The comics you publish are all uh, non-superhero. And, uh, yeah, and yeah. independently uh, yeah. creator-owned. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're mostly all autobiographical, so you know, that's that's your thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as a retailer, you, you really, you're, you're ordering mostly uh, what you know is going to sell because you have to make a living. Yeah, we'd like to stay open. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> And as a reader, well, you read what you enjoy, but, uh, you know... Uh, Which is hardly anything that we... S like, like right, most right, of the stuff right. I read is either stuff we pick or whenever we go somewhere that sells uh, a many right, comics right, or something. Right, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't buy as much... that I, <clears throat> I don't buy as much from my store as I used to. Right. I don't buy as much from your store either, but that's just because mostly I'm poor. <laughs> and I haven't been able to afford them. <laughs> Right. Uh, but I, I like to think that I, I read a wide variety of, of both you know, superhero and creator-owned non-superhero stuff. You know? But most of the stuff I wind up reading uh, is usually stuff that we pick I, for the show. I think most, most like, you know, to the core comic fans... Are that way. Yeah, they'll, yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll follow cr cr certain creators on no matter what they do. Right. Small press or, right. or big big two um yeah most people are willing to check out something um to at least give it a couple issues or a, a trade paperback try right. but it, i think it's i think it's the market you know the largest share of the market is the those kind of people that have they're just building a collection and they they don't care that they hate the incredible hulk they just they've got the other 600 so they might as well keep right. buying it and i mean i've been guilty of that myself in the past too you know like i collected the x-men for the longest time i collected Daredevil for a long time, but it's it's really like like I stopped buying Daredevil like six months ago. You know? mm -hmm. and I'll probably pick it back up again when when you know all is said and done. But you know, I will also say that the I only stopped buying it because it was not good anymore. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's how as a fan you should speak out. Like right, right. if something's not good, you don't buy it. Right. Um, and then. You know, consequently, the retailers cut their orders. Right, right. If, as long as you keep buying something that's, you know, you don't enjoy, they're going to keep making it the same way because they think you enjoy it. Right. Yeah. No, well, like I said, I don't think it's going to be fixed anytime soon. Yeah. There's no easy solution. Get off our soapbox. Huh? We should get off our soapbox. We should get off our soapbox and, uh, and, uh, something. All right. We'll be back. All right. <laughs> Seven Soldiers, recommend it, read it, buy it. Seven Psychopaths. <laughs> and, but, yeah, the Grant Morrison Seven Soldiers is good stuff, too. Grant Morrison Seven <laughs> Soldiers series was amazing. Yeah. And that is the finest example that you'll find of superhero comics that uh, has been published in the past ten years. It's exciting. It's fun. It's got a variety of characters and subjects and themes. And they're all written by Grant Morrison, and they all have fantastic artwork. By a plethora of diverse artists. Indeed. Check those out. Yeah. And while you're at it, <laughs> check out Seven Psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> published by Boom Studios. Because <laughs> that is a fantastic World War II story with fantastic art by Sean Phillips. And uh, Fabian Vellman was the writer, and I think he's French. And it's a deal at 10 bucks for a trade. There you go. Look at that. 750 at Mavericks. Buy it, folks. Seven Psychopaths. I'm with you It doesn't matter where we are Or what we're doing I'm with you, that's all that matters Time passes much too quickly When we're together laughing Are we 
wish I could sing it to you. Oh no, I wish I could sing it to you. Gunner Trash, everybody. Hello. How's it going? Excellent. How was your break? Oh, my break was good. Fantastic. Yeah. I needed a break. Did you do it again? Um, did some mental calisthenics. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Recited the alphabet backwards twice. Yeah. Wow. That's what I do. Well, I'm practicing because if I ever get pulled over for being drunk, you know, drunk right, right. I want to be able to do that backwards because yeah. I, think, I think they... That's what I think that's what I say on TV shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to do it really well. I don't want to get caught, you know, with my proverbial pants down and say I can't even do that when I'm sober. Right, right. You know, because then they're like, oh, yeah. you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> For all you drunk drivers out there, you can take my uh, online course on the, how, <laughs> how to how to beat the man. <laughs> Just send forty dollars to. Uh, Bibleware.guttertrash.net. PayPal. PayPal. Yeah. <clears throat> That's not a real thing. Nope. <laughs> PayPal. Uh, yeah, it doesn't exist. Nope. I wonder why I give them so much money every month. <laughs> Should look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's alarming. Oh, credit card may be a fraud. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Uh, Hope they don't repossess my PS3. <laughs> so you get that off uh, Amazon or something? No, I bought it at Best Buy. Oh, okay. But I used my PayPal, PayPal credit card. Oh, okay. Because gotcha. that's the thing. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Indeed. Speaking of spending a shit ton of money. Yeah? Yeah. Guess who just did? You? Me. What'd you get? Uh, Nothing. Oh. Absolutely Nothing. Uh-oh. I got a shitty stay in a shitty hotel. <laughs> oh, That's what I got. You're talking about our vacation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Strap in, folks. It's going to be a fun one. Actually, it probably won't be. No, yeah. but strap yourself in anyway. Yeah. Safety first. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you might be listening to this at work operating heavy machinery. Or, right, yeah. You know. Don't get don't get distracted. No, you don't. You'll, no. That's the way people lose fingers. Exactly. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we went yeah. to we went to uh, a place. Yeah, we did that. We go to occasionally. We we've been there two other times in the past. Wow. This was our third trip to Chicago. That's right. Chicago. Chicago, the windy city. Windy city. <laughs> Are you saying that wrong? It's actually Chicago and the Windy City. Huh. Are you sure? Because we did a lot of twists and turns. We did. We yeah. did. Dudes. 
It doesn't seem like there was a lot of wind, either. Yeah, it was just bitterly cold. Oh, my fucking God, it was cold. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't really prepared. I knew it was going to be cold because it was cold here and, right. it's, you know, by yeah. a lake and it's a lot of concrete. Yeah, yeah. But it was way colder than I expected. Yeah, especially uh, Friday afternoon when we were uh, wandering around downtown yeah, looking like, for some place <laughs> like, to eat. Yeah, like, it's like four below. What should we do today? <laughs> Walk around outside? All right. <laughs> I don't know which one of us suggested that, which uh, one agreed, but... Uh, <laughs> it was, you know, uh, let's say that the, the fault it's of it mutual. was... Uh, mutual. Pretty, pretty mutual, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah we, uh, we had uh, kind of a journey. It was a, an, an adventure experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, like, even from the get-go, not even leaving... My house yet? It, it was, was uh, it was a little baby blizzard here in Dayton. Yeah, I would say it was a little more than a baby blizzard. Yeah, I'd say it was a full blown. Yeah, yeah. Well, blizzards, uh, you know, like feet of snow, right? Uh, there were feet of oh, snow. Okay. Here. Well, yeah. 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 Well, then, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a little scary. I think the first hour, hour and a half of the trip, I white knuckled the the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we left here around. Uh, 6 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, made, a, made a stop for gas and beverages before we headed out. And uh, then around uh, 7.30 or so, I said, hey, I really got to pee. Let's let's pull over to the nearest exit. There's a gas station. We pull in. And what do I see but uh, the Dayton Travel Center. <laughs> yeah. We were still in fucking Dayton. Yeah. Yeah, Dayton's not that big. Nope. <laughs> you can't drive around for an hour and a half in Dayton, like, no. from one side to the other. No, no, yeah. Unless you're driving really slow in the snow. Right. Uh. Of course, you know, we, right now, we're on the south side of Dayton. Right. And to be fair, we were on the north, on, on the north side right. by that point. But, uh, but so still, we, there, there's also uh, further south of Dayton than we are. You know, <laughs> right, it's still so Dayton. We weren't on the edge. Right. Yeah. Man, we were not. No. Uh, metaphorically, even, yeah. we were not on the yeah, edge. no. We were, uh, <coughs> I would say, overtly cautious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, was, which, thank God. Yeah, I was a little scared. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, when fucking semis are barreling down on you on roads that we can't even stay on or see. Right. Yeah, was, I think we shit ourselves a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was there's some uh, self-shitting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ice, a lot of snow. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. Yeah, but yeah. we made it. We did make it. It took us about three and a half hours to make it to uh, Indianapolis. Uh, and then uh, suddenly the roads were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, north of Indianapolis, everything was a okay. Yeah, it was. We like, still went. Yeah, we weren't speeding. Nah, or nah. So yeah, we didn't get there till super late. Yeah, but. it was like one thirty in the morning Chicago time, so about two thirty our time. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, although our previous visit there, uh, we got in at like four thirty. Yeah, but we left at like ten or something. Yeah, yeah. And we stopped and had uh, like. Popeye's chicken or something. Uh, no, we stopped for uh, breakfast at IHOP. Oh, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Oh, oh, but we're not talking about that trip. We're talking about this, this trip. One. We had the, the run-in with the aliens. Oh, the uh, gi- the like several the thousand windmills. windmills. Yeah. Uh, anyone out there who who uh, you know lives you know between uh, Indianapolis and Chicago. If you could tell me what the deal is with uh, that stretch of, I think, 65? I think it's 65. Yeah, yeah. that uh, has just uh, hundreds <laughs> of thousands of, of windmills. Giant windmills. Gigantic windmills with eerie red blinking oh. lights. <laughs> and we would just happen to be listening to Tool on your right. shuffle on the <laughs> iPod, and it was so <laughs> creepy. It was like it was like some alien invasion, because those things are enormous Yeah, with, like, just the, the slow sweeping uh, hand, yeah, and just miles and miles <laughs> and miles. Yeah, it looks like in some like DC cartoon when there's a, a you know like a million like robot sentinels from another planet. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was, it was super creepy. Yeah, yeah, we made it there. We made it to. Uh, well, we were about a half hour away from from getting to our hotel. 
When, uh, again, you know, I, I needed to pee. You're a beverage drinker. I'm a beverage drinker. Yeah. I drink a lot of beverages. Yeah. A seven-hour uh, car ride stretched into, like, ten. Yeah. You know, uh, I think I needed that to stay liquefied. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was, like I said, roads were bad. And it was good to stop once in a while. Oh, it's, yeah. it's good to stretch. Yeah. We're not yeah. in a hurry. Right. This isn't a... It's a vacation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's we're taking schedule. it easy. No itinerary. Throw your itineraries out the window. Yeah. Well, don't do that. I mean, it's littering if you're on the highway. Right, right, yeah, Five hundred dollars. Right. right. But uh, so yeah, so like uh, we were, I think, on ninety four in Chicago, and I was like, we're like half hour, twenty minutes away from our hotel still, and I was just like, I got, I got to pee again. And so we pulled off on the next. It's uh, there was a gas station, a BP, <laughs> and we pull in, and uh, I'm like, yeah, this is fine. And we get close to the door, and it's like, not here, not here, <laughs> not here, <sighs> not here. <laughs> the, one of the creepiest looking dudes I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> He's standing in the doorway of, of the BP. On the inside. On the inside, just staring at us. His, like, forehead was pressed against the glass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I like, I couldn't tell if he w- was the only one in there. Yeah. But, like, in my mind, he had just killed everyone that worked there that and was, was shopping there. My thought, yeah. yeah. And he was looking for more victims. Yep. He was a creepy looking motherfucker. Creepy and crazy looking. He had fucking, his eyes were as wide open as they possibly could go. <laughs> they were, they were, you are not exaggerating. <laughs> oh my god, that was. <laughs> Yeah, I needed to pee after I saw that guy. <laughs> but uh, not there. But not, not there. Not there. Yeah. Not there at all. We just kept going. We just pulled right out of that parking lot. Yep. <laughs> Didn't even slow down. Yeah. <laughs> For fear he would have just jumped out. Oh, us, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we drove around for a while trying to find some other place. And then on the way back to the highway, I think I saw that guy at the gas station across the street just, like, wandering around. Looking for more victims. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, we finally made it to our hotel and uh, ran in because I still hadn't paid. <laughs> uh, ran into the front desk and I was like, uh, I'm going to check in, but first I got to pee. Where's your bathroom? He like, pointed towards the wall and I went there. And, uh, peed on the wall. I peed on the wall. Yeah. Uh, it was hidden, luckily, so yeah. Yeah, nobody saw. Uh, it's a Chicago thing. If you're ever there, pee right. on the walls. It's true. They won't even, yeah. Yeah. It's like they'll take your, a Polaroid of you and like stick it on the wall. It's just like at a Mexican restaurant yeah. when it's your birthday. There, there are like five things that Chicago is famous for. Mm-hmm. There's got, Chicago pizza. You got the pizza. You got the wind. You got the wind. Uh, you got the lake. You got the uh, Cubbies. Or Navy Pier. Uh, you got the Cubs. And you got Pete on the walls. Pete on the walls, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They originally were going to call it uh, the Pete on the Wall City, but right. too many letters. Yeah. Had to yeah. shorten it. It's not really punchy. Right. Yeah. 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 Plus, they want to kind of give you something to, like, surprise you when you get there. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you get off the plane in Hawaii, they put the lay on you. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't give you that, no. like, like beforehand at the travel agency. No, right. Because it's a surprise. Yeah. 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 It's a bonus. It's something to look forward to. That's right. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so then uh, we checked in, and uh, thus began my, my weekend of misery. <laughs> And I'll, I'll say this right now, that uh, my weekend of misery was confined only to our hotel. Mm-hmm. I had a great time, like, the the rest of the time we were there, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, there, there was uh, one moment where, where uh, just my own bullshit got the best of me. But, uh, but uh, everything about the hotel was a miserable fucking experience for yeah. me. Yeah, there was nothing good about the Travel Lodge on Mannheim. If you're ever in Chicago, and you're ever staying near O'Hare Airport, particularly on Mannheim Road, do not stay at the Travel Lodge. I concur with you, sir. Oh, Christ. It's the same hotel we stayed at like two years ago when we first went. Uh, they were a day's in then. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have any problems with them then. No. I mean, it wasn't the best hotel in the world, but, you know, I mean... Certainly suitable. S- suitable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, for the price, no complaints. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what the fuck happened in the past two years, other than they changed their name and then decided to get massage chairs at the expense of uh, 
any other fixes that the hotel needed. Right. <laughs> oh, Christ. The, the the night guy when we checked in was an idiot. I mean, he was just s- slow-witted. Yeah. 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 Uh, They're like, okay, Charlie, you can work at the at the, right. the at the desk at night, and we'll try you out there and see if we can move you into another spot. Yeah, uh, being a former uh, night manager of, of two different hotels, mm-hmm. uh, it has been my experience that uh, a lot of night managers at hotels are not exactly the the, the brightest, the quickest, or the most normal people. <laughs> Which uh, really makes me fear for myself. Oh no! Well, no, you just keep odd hours. You probably I do you, keep odd yeah. Hours. I'm a night guy. Yeah, yeah. That's probably why you got that job. <laughs> Don't put yourself in the category with Timmy or Tommy or whatever his name was. I think his name was Tom. Really? I think so. <laughs> Tom at Travel Lodge on Mannheim. Get a different job, please. Uh, something that involves uh, padded, rounded corners oh. Oh. and uh, safety scissors. Oh. Oh. Uh, not a smart man is what I'm saying. Uh, I don't even know if I trust Tom with safety scissors. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Couldn't pay cash. I wanted to pay cash for the room, so that way it would just be out of the way. I used my credit card to reserve the room because I knew that we would be coming in late. Because mm-hmm. that's what you do at a hotel. Right. And then, if you want, you should be able to pay cash. Right. They won't let me pay cash. They're like, what? Cash? Yeah. It's like, um, but you already, with your credit card, and I was like, well, I, I held the room. I reserved the room with my credit card. I'd, I'd like to pay cash. But uh, you, your card is already, uh... The card. <laughs> this is pretty much how it went. Yeah. 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 Eventually, I was just, you know, tired. Just wanted to go to the room and sleep. And so I was like, whatever. Yeah. So we get to touch our manager in the morning. I was like, okay, fine. So we check in, go to our room, which had already been used. Yeah. And slept in. And, yeah. And not cleaned. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not like a germ freak or anything. No. But if I go to a motel and like all the covers are lying on the floor and you can tell the beds have been occupied. Right. Yeah. I, I don't even want to say slept in because right. what bothers me is that they were occupied. Good point. <laughs> I don't really Good care point. if somebody sleeps in it. Right. Yeah. I can, I, I, I can fall asleep, you know, in a chair at a oil change place or a right, bus right. station, but yeah, not after some random dude is, you know. Fucked Got something. his rocks off, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was what I said. Fucked something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I told you to wait in the room. I went back out to the the uh, the register to uh, get a new room because because that's unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was on the phone when when I got there and then uh, told whoever he was talking to that uh, he needed to go. Uh, <laughs> And I was like, hey, yeah, so the room you sent us to, like, someone's been in there. And uh, this is how the conversation went. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm not, I wouldn't, I'm, I, I'm, I wouldn't be the person that would know a thing about that. I don't, there's no way for me to tell that that, that would have happened. <laughs> I was like, whatever, just fix it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, so he, he gave us uh, a new room, and uh, he was like, well, I'm going to wait until a couple minutes so you and your friend can get settled in, and I'll give you a call, see if everything's okay. I was like, you know what? It's late. I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. If something's wrong. I'll let you know. Yes. <laughs> so I go back down to our, uh, our, our old room and uh, get you. Retrieve and, your buddy. Yeah. And uh, move to, to the next room, which was, uh, uh, never give up. Uh, which was right next door, which, which appeared to be clean and yeah. unoccupied ever. Yeah. And that's, of course, when I found out that uh, the person he was talking to on the phone when I got there was you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he had called to make sure everything was okay, and I was like, no, it is not. 
<laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I was trying to pretend as if you were like some highfalutin like, Yakuza businessman, but I was like, I was like, no, it's not. And Mr. Seanborn is on his way down there to talk to you. That's what I said. <laughs> I've never called you Mr. Seanborn ever. No, should you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like your, I was like your, uh, oh, what's, what's, uh, oh man, I was your Renfield. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we, we settle in, we sleep. Uh, next morning I wake up, I go to take a shower. There's no hot water and there's no water pressure. Just just thinking about it again too. Yeah, uh, yeah and I tried to make a tea for uh, out of their coffee machine. Oh yeah, that's in, the, right. in our room, and coffee machine doesn't work. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, <clears throat> and none of the lights worked when we when we got in. Yeah, that was that was weird. Well, yeah, the one flip like the flip switch worked, but nothing right. else did. Yeah, the lamps. Yeah, yeah. but uh, magically, like, uh, well, we we discovered that some of them just weren't plugged in. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I was gonna try to save a little face there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was one that was one that plugged in, but the ones, the ones like that are fixed into the wall. Yeah, they just, just just didn't work. Yeah. and then they for some reason did. Yeah, and they had bulbs on them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so the next morning, I go to chat the to the manager, like like Tom you know, suggested, and uh, then I start getting flack from f- fucking Hindu Bob that works there in the mornings. Uh, it's like, uh, I walk up and I'm like, yeah, can I, can I talk to your manager? And like, he looks into like the side office and he points, but then he retracts his pointing and he's like, manager's not here. And I was like, well, who did you just point to? Uh, nobody's here. And I kind of look and I can see someone in there. Right. I'm like, well, who's that? Uh, this is a salesperson. Okay. Well, is the manager in there too? Manager's not here. Well, you pointed in there as if there was a manager, and you were almost going to tell me that the manager was here, but uh, you didn't. The manager's not here. We'll be in at noon. So, well, I was told the manager would be here at 8. Uh, not here right now. So, are you lying to me? <laughs> well, why would you call me a liar? Why would you assume that I am lying to you? He's like, well, because you pointed in there like there was a manager, and then you said there wasn't a manager, so I'm just assuming you're lying to me for some reason. <laughs> like the manager, like, waved him off or something. Right, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, well, what do you need? I was like, well, I want to pay cash for my room. Well, you cannot pay cash. <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently cash is a bad thing I guess, to have yeah. in Chicago. Or at least at the travel lodge. Right, right, yeah. Not Apparently, Chicago. They, they just don't want my money. You right. Know, You're in hand. You know, I mean. Well, I did sort of represent you as a member of uh, a drug dealing <laughs> Japanese mafia. That's fine. They should still accept my money. Yeah. Laundered or not, it still spends. Yeah. yeah it's true, yeah. <laughs> there might be a little blood on some of the bills. Right, right. But what money doesn't have blood on it? Seriously. Exactly. Or cocaine. Mmm. Love the cocaine. Uh, so, I got tired of him, and then we just went and had breakfast. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we had a good Denny's breakfast. Had a good Denny's breakfast. Awesome waitress sang Frank Sinatra to us. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, uh, I think around, uh, when we were leaving Denny's, that was like the sixth time that you mentioned to me that I needed to get a hat and gloves. <laughs> I was worried about your your health. I didn't want you to <laughs> have any atrophied limbs. Yeah, so we uh, we hit um, uh, Kmart so I could buy some, and I found a cheap pair of uh, I found like a cheap three pairs of gloves and a hat, so that uh, you would uh, stop being my mommy. Yeah, well, you know somebody needed to apparently. Uh, I guess, uh, and then truth be told, they helped. Yeah, yeah, especially later that afternoon. We did some walking around. We did some walking around. We did some driving. We, uh, cause, uh, the whole purpose of us going to Ch- Chicago was to see the live recording of uh, A Never Not Funny. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts, hosted by Jimmy Pardo. Uh, they were doing a live show in Chicago. 
it's uh, a fun time to be had going to Chicago yeah. with my pal Jason. I figure that's a good excuse since we didn't get to go this past year. Yeah, we didn't get to go to Windy City. Uh, so uh, we did that, but that was on Saturday. We had time to kill. And that's when you discovered uh, uh, some sort of art exhibit at uh, a museum somewhere. Museum of the MCA Contemporary Art. Uh, yeah. It was a comic show, basically. Yeah, it was like all new, newer Chicago artists. Yeah. <coughs> Paul really? Hornschmeyer. Hornsch- uh, we've talked to the guy. Yeah, Paul Horn. Paul, Paul. I think it's Hornschmeyer. Hornschmeyer, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anders Nilsson, Jeffrey Brown, and some other person whose work did not impress uh, me as much. I can't remember her name. I feel bad. Lily something. I really liked her animation. That was cool. Yeah. I think mostly it was the novelty of seeing what was obviously just comic art. You know, Anim- animated. Yeah. Right. And not web comic style. You know. mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, a very diverse and awesome display of artwork. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some of it was kind of soul crushing. Uh, mostly Anders Nilsson stuff. See, I, I found it all inspiring. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. Really, it really uh, set my juices up. Off, uh, off. This is not, uh, you know, Adam Hughes level soul crushing. Right. Really. It was just sort of momentarily soul crushing. Right. Yeah, just looking at his art in, in like full detail, like you know, close up and, and well, like a like I mentioned at the show, like we we've seen most of these people like their original art before, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Just because like two of them have contributed to your Fantastic Four project, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's I'm like, lucky to have them. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So it's not like it was like anything like new and unexperienced before it's but just it's just like a reminder of yeah, like how yeah. awesome some people are yeah 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 I, mean, I i get that with uh some actually some of those same people like sometimes i look at them like man i should just break my pencils they get these guys are so far at, light years ahead of anything i've ever done right but at the same time you're like but they started somewhere and like i even have uh, uh speaking of anders nelson i have a couple of his like older Issues of big questions when it was more like a mini comic, right. and it's it still looks cool. And like I bought them because I thought they looked awesome. I'd never even heard of him. I was just saw him there, um, but he's just improved like leaps and bounds since yeah. since those. So, um, anybody can get there. Anybody, right. full little, uh, uh, you know what's what I'm looking for? Uh, Moxie. They're okay. A little, mon- a little, sure. little gumption, a little gumption. That's yeah, the way yeah. let's, let's say that that's what it is. <laughs> I liked your gumption, Anders Nelson. There we go. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice stuff to look at. Uh, Jeffrey Brown stuff was impressive. Yeah, that was sort. Of, yeah, I sort of like, like, <laughs> yeah. I was looking at those sketchbooks and I was like, right. oh my god, this is so cool to see all those and and uh, there was like a display case of. 10 or 20 of his sketchbooks. Yeah. Wow, that was awesome. Just at all various stages of, of what he does, you know, from from sketches to, to like, his layouts, like, like, like one sheet of paper that has, like, you know, a 20-page book laid out. All right, yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah cause he, and he, his comics, he pretty much draws in sketchbooks. Right. So, like, basically... At the size that they're published, basically. Yeah, so basically, like, the original art from, like, Ten of his graphic novels, like from start to finish, was on display there. Right. It was crazy. But they were encased, so you could like you could yeah. Like that. Right. But uh, very cool, and also like I just want to say like like I think uh, my my less than impressed stance on uh, the the other person's work, uh, Lily, whatever. I think that mostly just came from just being completely unfamiliar with it. Yeah, I I had never seen her artwork before. Yeah. I mean, I, I was looking forward to seeing, you know, Paul Hochheimer's and Jeffrey Brown's and Anders Nilsson's work. But, uh, like, her work was fine. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I think it was just, I don't know her. I've never seen a book by her. Right. You know, yeah, we're, like, awaiting to see the other three, so we're way more excited. Right, yeah. right. Uh, and then, yeah, and then for some reason after that, we decided to walk around in, like, negative 20-degree Chicago weather. <laughs> Uh, like idiots. Yeah. <laughs> At least we didn't have like a a camera and a and a map. Right. You know, yeah, like, yeah. That was the only 
silver lining for that little yeah. walk. Uh, we wound up going to a cafe where we got accosted by a homeless guy. And you kindly gave him some I dollars. I gave him a dollar, and, uh, and you did too because you were guilted into it because <laughs> I was guilted into it. Right. Uh, it was annoying. Uh, what else did we do? We went to another little went gallery. To another art gallery. Yeah. 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 Saw Dave Dorman and artwork and Jill Thompson and yeah. Hillary Barda. Jeffrey Brown artwork. Jeffrey Brown. Hillary Barda, which was amazing. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just great. Uh, I think it was an eerie story or something that he had up there. Creepy or eerie, one of yeah. those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some Jill Thompson pages and her Inhuman stuff. Yeah, which I never knew that she yeah. did anything. Where is that? Yeah, let's and, find that. And also, like, like you know, like I've, I'm a huge fan of The Invisibles. So I'd say it's probably my favorite comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she did a chunk of Invisible stuff, especially like the the first uh, series. And I never liked her work, but seeing those original pages, like of like the Inhumans and like her uh, Beast of Burden pages and yeah. stuff like that, scary Godmother. When did she become amazing? Yeah. When? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Beast of Burden stuff was pretty awesome. Yeah. And and uh, back to the Jeffrey Brown thing for a second. Oh yeah. Like I clearly, uh, he's one of my favorite living comic artists. Right. And I think those pages that were at Los Manos. Is that what it was called? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the most incredible artwork I've ever seen from him. Right, the yeah. uh, the stuff from Paul is Undead, the <clears throat> zombie art, kind of blew my mind. Like, it's like the zombie beetle story. Or yeah. Some sort. yeah. It was pretty amazing. It's like super detailed, like all gray toned with markers. And yeah, it was impressive. Very yeah. impressive. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's another example of somebody that... Whose style has like developed so much right. in the last ten years? Um, also saw like some stuff uh, by people I was pretty unfamiliar with that I was really impressed by. Uh, Mitch O'Connell, like uh, his pieces were incredible. Yeah, like they're on these like giant lacquered pieces of wood. Yeah, and they they have like stickers on them, but like it's like this black and white painting of like some devil woman and. It's very like a uh, hot rod art kind of yeah, kind of, like very like uh, uh, Big Daddy Rat Roth Frank, and know, yeah. Coop and those guys. It's amazing. For and, Shizzle, uh, another artist I'm unfamiliar with, uh, Chris Burnham. He had the, those Batman pages. Oh yeah, uh, that like I mean they were coated in blue line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen Smurfs with less blue on than, than some of those pages. <laughs> but it was pretty good. They were incredible. And, uh, like, it's funny because, like, uh, between that and, like, when we were looking at the Anders Nilsson stuff, like, uh, you brought up how comics have to be, like, the only, like, medium, like, that can be presented as art with all their imperfections showing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of the Anders Nilsson pages had three pieces of paper like cut and pasted together and like right. uh correction fluid everywhere yeah. and i was like wow that's so cool yeah like, like there was one like a double page spread that he had where like he had wide out the 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 main drawing that, like, it was like four the, times it's like an airplane wing or something yeah 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 that was incredible it was very yeah like that was the inspiring part was seeing all the mistakes and things right, right. On, on this yeah that was that was super good yeah Double plus good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that was awesome. Uh, I know, like, because uh, you had suggested the the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art Gallery, and I suggested this Los Banos Gallery, but I thought they were both impressive yeah, in their own way. exactly. It was a very good coupling. Of, yeah, yeah. Because they were so different. Uh, so, yeah, that was awesome. And uh, I don't know if they're still going on, but uh, if they are and you're in Chicago, check them out. I, I know the contemporary art one's done. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, Lost Manos was through the end of this month, so it's probably done by the time this will go up. So yeah. you're fucked. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, sh- I'm sure there's something else good in both of those places. Oh, right I'm now. sure there are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Although I have to say, when we walked out of the New Chicago Artist section, and we walked into like the like modern art section of of that. Oh. Contemporary, 
and there was like that heady like yeah. uh representational Yoko Ono kind of artwork yeah. like giant uh just puddles and giant boxes and there was like a metallic box that had like a uh like a little uh you know nuts from nuts and bolts just on the ground yeah head. just thrown in the box yeah, yeah. what the fuck yeah <laughs> Yeah, some of that stuff was it was a little too conceptual for me. Yeah. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it was shit. Yeah, some of it was just a little too shit for me. Yeah. That's not art. <laughs> That's just <laughs> bullshit. See, oh, I don't want to get into the what is art conversation, but... I don't really either, but that wasn't I, it. Like, I'm not sure that that wasn't art, but I know that I didn't like it. <clears throat> there was one of them that was like uh, a pyramid of chairs facing a TV. Yeah, and there was like... One that was so like, uh, it was it was a a two pronged ladder. Half of it was painted pink and half of it was painted blue, yeah. and it met at the top and made this tiny little ladder. Right. And you're like, gee, I wonder what that's supposed to represent. I don't know. Ah, uh, I feel like an asshole because somebody probably made that and they were like, oh wow, this 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 is me getting out and in, into my work. You know what I feel or something. But no, it's they, just they, so it's, cheesy. They were. Bullshit. Yeah. It seems like that something... Person, that artist, quote-unquote. Bullshit. It seems like the kind of art that really rich people would make. Because, like, they have, you know, like, n- nothing to, like, pull from. Right. You know, there's like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Stand order a hundred ladders. You know? <laughs> I so think, I can uh, make my piece of artwork. <clears throat> what I said earlier about, like, you know, autobiographical comics done by, like, you know, 20-year-olds with a Kinko's card. Yeah. I think that's, like... The modern art version of that. Right. It's just people with no life experience who have never had any kind of hardship or whatever doing what they think of as art. They're not from the street like you and I. No. We've seen shit. I'm we, certainly not saying that we are that, that either. Yeah. No, I know. But yeah, <clears throat> like that's what I got from that sort of that, that room. It was like this vibe of like people with just a ton of money and like nothing interesting to say right, that right. made some artwork. So, yeah, so fuck artists. Yeah, fuck yeah. you. Fuck you, artists. <coughs> what are you doing in a museum? That's where comic, comics belong. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, and then uh, after that, we uh, we went back to the hotel for, for uh, a little while. A little breather. A little breather. And I was finally able to pay fucking cash. Yeah. <laughs> you found the one person in that hotel that was like, yeah, cash is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some, like... 18 year old girl who was working there in the evening and uh, she let me pay cash. Of course, uh, the ATM in the hotel uh, only had like a limit of like $100, so I had to make two withdrawals. All right. uh, but uh, yeah, and then we, we went and uh, did uh, the second thing I was looking forward to the most. Yeah. Have some fucking Chicago style pizza. Oh, and it was good. Yes, it was. I was worried. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't like it when waiters don't write down what your order oh, is. Oh, yeah. It's always been a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. Like, it's meant to impress the customer. Right. But all it does is unnerve me. Yep. Because I don't eat meat. And, like, and mine isn't, you know, mine is, like, I'd say 60% political. Right. So if they bring out something that I've ordered and it has meat in it, I even feel worse if I'm by sending it back because then it's wasted. And I'm like, right. well, the whole purpose of me ordering it without meat is to not, like, you know, support them, you know, the meat. Sure. And then, like, then they're just throwing it away. And, like, nobody's eating it. So right. I even, I just want to eat it when they bring it out. So, see, so, yeah, it always unnerves me. Right. Always. I'm always worried that I'm going to get a big chunk of pepperoni in mine. I, uh, I think this is the first time that you have ever said that uh, to me, anyway. And I've asked you point blank uh-huh. whether your whole vegetarianism was political or not. Well, not political, I like... Like I want to have rallies, but I mean, you know, because they have they have some good meat over at rallies. Right. Yeah. Get the address through. <laughs> no, um, not not like a, a an anti meat rally. I just I don't like supporting the meat industry. Like if I could kill my own animals, I would come closer to to eating those. Like if I had a shotgun and a, like a you know right. the, the time and energy to do yeah. that, but I don't. Nothing stopping you. I don't. I don't want to <laughs> spend the time to do that. I just don't like the idea of like. Oh, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, but you, you, you do realize that there's a whole vegetable 
industry as well, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the government uh, you know controls you know farms and. You know, but I'm, so, I'm picking a battle. Okay, I'm just picking yeah. a battle. All right, I'm just saying that uh, the very same battle is going on on your side too. R- right, right. Yeah, but I'm thinking of more like the conditions that you know. Like, I know the workers for all of them are, like, shat upon, but yeah, so yeah, are the workers yeah. in every industry. Yeah. But uh, I'm just thinking more of, like, the actual... Because I, I like animals. Yeah. I don't really... I like animals, too. Yeah. I like meat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the difference, though. I'm not going to eat my cat. Right, exactly. My cat's awesome. His name is Max, and he's fat. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat Max either. Even if he was a vegetable, <laughs> I wouldn't eat Max. That's how much I like him. Uh-huh. Yeah, awesome pizza. Yeah. Awesome pizza. Yeah. He got it right, too. They well, did. he uh, actually uh, screwed up one of my vegetables, but whatever. No, I yeah. didn't care. Uh, but, yeah, like, also in, like, that situation where, like, you know, uh, like, he didn't write it down. And, like, you know, I'm ordering, you know, meat on my pizza and you're not. And, like, you know, like, what if they put, like, you know, one of your shitty vegetables that I won't eat, like, into my meat. <laughs> right. Or, like, you know, uh, like, like eggplant. I but uh, luckily they got it right. I it's also know. hard to tell because like it is like the the stuffed pizza, so it's covered. Yeah, you don't know what's in the inside until you open it. Right. Yeah. It's like a it's like a little uh, it, party game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. What's party inside your meal? Of cheesy goodness. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, then after that, uh, we could talk up with our buddy. We did. Kurt Kurt Dins, writer. Artist, listener, listener, friend. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I felt bad too because I didn't realize I was getting sick. But like that day is when I was starting to feel sick. Right. And uh, when we were hanging out with him, I, like I was like half, like half tired. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I felt a little bad later. But then uh, you know I realized I was getting sick. So right. Hope I didn't ruin his time. But uh, it was because I was uh, a little under the weather there, buddy. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't think we ruined his time, but they, uh, our energy level certainly was not as high. Yeah, as it, should, it was low. Yeah. It was low. Uh, we had a good time. We had a great time. Yeah. Talked about comics. He comics. gave us some stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey Kurt. <laughs> uh, I hope. I hope if you're listening to this, I, I know you you don't usually listen to this like, until like a couple weeks from now, but uh, I hope you didn't spend a lot on your uh, bottle openers. Yeah. Because one can of Coke uh, defeated both of the ones you gave us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to open your can of Coke, and you're like, oh, my God, I think I broke my bottle opener. Yeah. And I was like, ha, ah, use mine. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I think I broke yours, too. Yeah. Uh, and, like, I, I was cautious with yours, too, because I was like, all right, I broke mine. That, that sucks. Hmm. You know, maybe I just sort of, you know, just cranked it onto the bottle cap and right. you know, just was all willy-nilly about opening that bottle cap. Right. And with yours, I was like, okay, I'll make sure that it's in there right. I'll do it slow. You know, just, That's what she said. Right. And uh, you know, just kind of like open the bottle cap just a little bit, you know, make sure that it pops off. But uh, nope, even doing that, just fucking crack that thing uh, in half. Still works as a keychain. It still does work as a keychain. Mm-hmm. And as a nice little memento from uh, one year in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, an awesome comic. An awesome comic that oh. everyone should check out if you haven't already. And he threw a shout out in the. He gave us a, a Conrad one year in Indiana like little comic. Yeah, the uh, the frat boy. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a nice shout out for gutter trash. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Kurt. S- said we're crap free or something. One hundred percent. One hundred percent crap. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a lot. Yeah. And I would uh, say the very same thing about uh, one year in Indiana, or anything that Kurt Dins does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I haven't listened to his uh, his CD that he gave us yet. Oh yeah, I, I listened to one of them because yeah. uh, there was like two discs in there. Oh, was it? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good. It's it's, good. it's it reminds me of like the 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 like mid mid to late nineties like kind of punk rock hardcore that okay like my friend Nick was super super into and right, right. I was kind of into so right, right. Uh, yeah it was right. good. I should uh, give him a listen. Yeah. I, I inquired about them. I, I should listen to them. Hoboken Apocalypse. Hoboken Apocalypse, yeah. Uh, so, look forward to listening to those at some point. Uh, sorry that I haven't already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're busy dudes. Yeah. I don't busy listen dude. to much music. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was super awesome hanging out with them. Uh, 
we we went out and bought him a couple of werewolf by night comics. <laughs> As one does when yeah. you when you meet a Kurt Dins. Everyone should. Yeah. If you ever meet a Kurt Dins, just uh give you, a werewolf by comic. It, it's by like, night comic. It's like when you you go to see a king, you, you bring offerings, right, g- yeah, gifts and whatnot. Yeah. If you see this man at a at a space or uh which he won't be there this the, year, but uh, he'll be at C two E two though. Yeah, C two E two. You you bring him an offering. Yeah. You don't just walk up to his right. table and no. Expect to purchase something without first giving him offering, right? Yeah, and again, preferably a uh, werewolf by night. Yeah. Preferably not number two or three, right? Because uh, <laughs> that's what we got him. Yeah, uh, but maybe, uh, maybe even like a Morbius, the living vampire. Oh, he probably uh, like that. you know uh, something seventies, uh, something horror, something Marvel, something old Richard Corbin, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, I know yeah. He likes the Corbin. I, I would assume he does. Yeah. But seriously, like, no, no joke. If you go up to his table without a gift, he will laugh at you, spit on you, and tell you to reconsider your life. Yeah. It's just what he does. Yeah. It's the way he rolls. And then he'll give you a shitty keychain that'll break the first time you use it. Uh, oh, yeah. He also gave us uh, the comic that he did with our other listener, oh, yeah. Brian John Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. Which I had already read before online, yeah. and I really enjoyed it, but now i got a physical copy. Physical copy. Because uh, I don't like digital. Digital is for wussies. Exactly. Uh, give me some paper. I want to kill a tree. Kill some trees, read some yeah. comics. Uh, but now yeah, it was super fun hanging out with him. Uh, super fun looking at our uh, our bartender turn around. Because <laughs> uh, when he saw the front side, it was horrifying. <laughs> when he saw the back side, it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> it was it was uh it was, it was bizarre. Yeah. It was very bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I cannot think of a finer definition of butterface. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> man! <sighs> so anyway, yeah, yeah. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. We just went back and, and passed out. And, Saturday morning, uh, went out again, uh, hit a couple comic shops, I think, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chicago Comics, uh, Challenger uh, comics. Challengers Comics, which I'll get into, mm-hmm. uh, went to a place called Bucket of Blood Books, mm-hmm. which, uh, is not what I imagined it would be. Yeah. There was, uh, there was a little bit less focus on the horror than you would expect. Yeah, from, from that name. Yeah. But, you know, he had, he had some horror. Uh, he had some stuff, and, and it was a nice little store, mm-hmm. and uh, he was friendly. And, uh, I found some he gems. He bought like $60 worth of comics yeah. from there. And, uh, so I think I spent like 20, 25, right. 25 yeah. It was a lot more than I would have expected you to buy in comics from that store. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he had like he had like eighty comics, and I bought like thirty of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then yeah, we uh, we went to uh, Challengers Comics because uh, artist Mike Norton was having a signing there, and uh, we got there like early and uh, just kind of hung out, and looked around the store. It was a pretty awesome store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really clean, had a great variety. You know, like, like definitely, you know, very indie friendly and then mini comic friendly and also like, like, you know, like they had art supplies, which yeah. I've never seen at a comic shop before. I mean, yeah, I mean, we carry like the blue line pages right, occasionally, right. like not all the time, but yeah, that is a great <clears throat> idea to have. I mean, they had like sketchbooks and pens right, and, right. you know, protractors and whatever. French curves. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Pretty awesome. Right next to the mini comics, which is also a great idea. Right, right, yeah. <clears throat> a little art gallery. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a uh, frightening bathroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. We, we had comic shop bathroom. Uh, we, we did. Experience. We did. I went to the Chicago comics bathroom, which was awesome. Right. Uh, the bathroom here was fine. Like, like, it was clean and, and uh, you know, like, like not disgusting like like a maverick's bathroom right, right. yeah, yeah. What, what but, is right but across from uh the toilet uh they, they have like this big blank wall and they had uh like a, the superman diamond shape with a c in it for challengers comics you know like on the on the wall mm-hmm. but looked like it had been painted in bloody handprints. <laughs> that's creepy yeah, that's <laughs> okay. uh those are all the the people that have murdered in the bathroom yeah yeah and use their severed limbs to right. 
Yeah. Paint the paint the bloody insignia. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mike Norton uh, was doing a signing there. He just had uh, Young Justice number zero come out that week. So uh, I guess it was more for for the the. Younger fans of his uh, to, to get that signed, but there I was, creepy 32-year-old fat guy, uh, wanting to get my Young Justice number zero signed. <laughs> Which you brought with you from Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also bought his sketchbook while I was there. Uh, Push Challengers is also where I discovered that my fucking hotel screwed me. Oh, yeah. They mm-hmm. held the, 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 the cost of my stay at the hotel. On my credit card, despite the fact that I'd already just paid cash. Yeah, that seems illegal and wrong. Yeah. 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 So, I did not have access to uh, the money that I thought that I did. Uh, And so, uh, while I was trying to buy stuff at this comic shop, uh, I was told my card was declined. In front of Mr. Norton. In front of Mike Norton. <clears throat> but you, uh, you gave me the money to to cover me till uh, till I could figure out what was going on and get my money back. We were golden. Yeah, yeah. So I was able to buy stuff and thank you again. Oh yeah, no problem. But yeah, I bought his sketchbook. I bought uh, something a souvenir for a friend of mine. Uh, you had found. Uh, I think we've talked about it on the show before the uh, pirate. Girl. Oh, Cursed Pirate Girl. Yeah, yeah. With the, uh, the issue that neither of us had, they had yeah. their... Jeremy Bastion. Wow, that yeah, guy is a fucking amazing. draw. Yeah. Look him up, kids. Cursed Pirate Girl, Olympian Books or Press or whatever. Right, yeah. Amazing. Good stuff. And, uh, they had a huge uh, half-price section. I bought a couple of Paul Grist uh, Kane graphic novels. They probably had like 500... Trade paperbacks at half price. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, there was a bunch of stuff I would have bought, but I was like, you know... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I was super impressed by that story. Actually, yeah. I didn't expect. I, ex- I mean, like, like there I go uh, generalizing. But all the superheroes painted on the window. I was like, oh, I probably won't find a lot of stuff I want to read. Right. But you know, it looks like a nice store. Right. But I yeah, I found some, a ton of stuff too. Yeah. There. Uh, and then after four years of of hearing about him on the radio or on the internet, actually, I got to meet Ninja. Oh, yeah. yeah. The dog. Mike Norton's uh, pug. <laughs> <coughs> he was awesome. He was just walking around the store. Let yeah. me pet him like four times here. <laughs> See? Yeah. That's a good, that's a good experience. Yeah. And then, uh, then after that, I panicked and we had to go back to the hotel while I figured out what the fuck was going on with my life. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then found out that my hotel was fucking me again. Yeah. Yeah, they that was not the best hotel. No. Not the best. Uh, and after that, we saw the Never Not Funny show, which was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. And inside uh, a death trap of a theater. That was an awesome old theater. The it Cong- was pretty awesome. The Congress. But yeah, yeah, yeah it was super crazy old looking. Yeah, very broken down. You did not go to the bathroom there. Mm-hmm. I did. And I thought I was going to die. It was creepy and dirty, and the stalls uh, were just curtains, oh. and there were no lights. Yeah, that's so bizarre. Yeah. I, I like a door on the bathroom stall. I like a door. I like light. Yeah. Yeah. Lights and doors. Yeah. Good things for a bathroom. Good things for a bathroom. Cleanliness also a good thing for a bathroom. Mm-hmm. See, I've never heard about that. Yeah. Working at Mavericks and all. Yeah. I forgot what you were saying. No. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the show was hilarious. Uh, you know, if you've, if you've never listened to Never Not Funny, uh, I would suggest you uh, check out the free 20 minutes that you get and then uh, subscribe. Because mm-hmm. it's yeah. hilarious. That's what I would do if yeah. I didn't get to hear your subscription for free. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Go have these with someone. Yeah. Or just yeah, find yeah. someone who does subscribe and listen to theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, and then you pulled me away from meeting uh, Pat Francis in that bell now. I did not. I blamed you, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, why not? Yeah. And then that's when uh, my bullshit you know, got the better of me, and I just became super depressed for like three hours. Uh, yeah, that happens to everybody every yeah. once in a while. Uh, At least that's cool kids. Yeah. Uh, then we drove around for like half an hour trying to find some place to eat because you wanted fruit. <laughs> I know. I was like... I was craving fruit, and there's no grocery. I called like four different groceries, and I remember, like it was like, it was like eleven o'clock at night almost. Yeah. And I called one grocery, and and then like he answered on the first ring. He's like, 
it was like somebody's name, like Frank's or Tony's. Sal's, Tony's, yeah. He's like, Tony's? And I was like, I was like, how late are you guys open? He's like, oh, we closed at nine. It's like, it's like two <laughs> hours ago. Why are you still answering the phone? Counting the money? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, security? Like, like, we, we work at Mavericks once a week now after we close. Right. If, if five minutes after we close, the phone rings and it rings 30 times, it rings 30 times. Yeah. Why don't you put a silence on that? I don't know how to do that. That's technology. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not. Pretty sure it's just a volume knob. <laughs> That's, see, I don't know anything about knobs and right. buttons. Right. Just a suggestion. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was weird. So yeah. I couldn't find fruit, so we ended up getting with tacos. Some tacos. And and pretty good ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was actually a really nice, like, relaxing night. We watched Cheaters and ate <laughs> tacos. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, then the next morning, we, we finally checked the fuck out of there, out of that hellhole, out of that piece of shit hotel, Travel Lodge on Manaheim Road, 1900 North Manaheim, Travel Lodge. <laughs> don't go there. No, don't, don't go there. Yeah. Um, then had breakfast with my aunt. And your uncle. And my uncle, yeah, yeah. Uh, Abe and Gladys. Good to see them, always. They rule. They do. I love them. Yeah. I wish they were... I would trade most of my aunts and uncles, like even up, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, it was a fun time hanging out with them. Always glad to see them. Uh, treated us to breakfast, which was awesome. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, uh, and then uh, and then you and I did a heist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot about the heist. <clears throat> Uh, one of my friends uh, here in uh, Dayton, uh, when she found out that I was going to Chicago, uh, begged me to uh, to pick up some uh, some pizzas from a, a pizza place in Chicago called Nancy's Pizza, uh, and uh, because I'm a sucker, I agreed. And uh, <laughs> uh, part of this uh, fiasco was that uh, obviously we're, we're bringing pizzas, you know. Seven hour road yeah, trip. Right. So we kind of need to keep them, you know, cool. <laughs> uh, so rather than go buy ice. <laughs> and our hotel didn't have an ice machine. Our right? hotel did not have an ice machine uh, because, again, uh, I don't know if we've mentioned this or not. <laughs> our hotel was a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I th- yeah, I think earlier you said something. Did I? Like okay. Yeah. Right. I'm just making sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh,. So yeah, we went to the hotel that we actually stayed at last year. Which is like a block down the road. Right, yeah. And which we should have stayed at this year, but they changed their name. And so I didn't know they existed still. So. <laughs> uh, I went in there, and uh, I had like uh, four freezer bags with me, like Ziploc bags. And uh, like I walked in, and like I got stopped like in the front door by this woman smoking a cigarette. She's like, are you checking in? Are you already here? And I was like, I panicked. And I was like, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. She's like, oh, it's two doors down on the right. I was like, okay. And, like, I walked in, and I saw the ice machine, and uh, I just went straight for it and then started loading the bags with ice. <laughs> <laughs> and then I left the side door <laughs> and uh, had to walk around the building off to the side where you saw me, and then you came and picked me up. And you made the caca sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, uh, you have a smoke signal, yeah. and, you know, uh, we give, pass- give each other passwords. and <laughs> Yeah. It was an ice heist. It was an ice heist. Yeah. In the most literal sense. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> it's uh, ice, though. I mean, they yeah, got ice machines. It'll make more. Yeah. 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 And, uh... And, and it's fucking cold, anyway. Who wants ice? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so then we went to go pick up the pizzas in the wrong place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So apparently, in Chicago, there's a, a York Street and a York Road... Uh, both are actually on the same stretch of road, uh, just in the opposite direction of yeah, each other. Yeah, with a uh, train track that, in between, in between yeah. that uh, has wow. a very long and slow train. Yeah, like 40 minutes we were sitting there, mm-hmm. it yeah. felt like anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, although where, where the restaurant was supposed to be, uh, that, that we first went to, was probably the fanciest McDonald's I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. high class. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the place was, uh, on the other the end of the street, uh, technically nine miles away, it took 40 minutes to get there because we got stuck by a train, 
Uh, it turns out that uh, where the pizza place was, two miles from our <laughs> hotel. <laughs> yeah. Around the corner. <laughs> <coughs> you know, they probably would have given us ice there, too, now that I think about it. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but well, we, got, we got It was an adventure, though. Yeah, it was an adventure. We yeah. got them. We, we smuggled uh, four pepperoni deep dish stuffed pizzas across uh, two state lines. That's right. No one even thought to look in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then uh, made the long trip back home pretty uneventful. Listen to some some good comedy, though. Some comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Maria Manford, Jen Kirkman, Comedy Death Ray. Yeah. yeah. That was the play-by-play of our awesome Chicago adventure. It was very awesome. I'm really glad we went. Although, yeah, I was, I was sick for most of it. Yeah. And when I got home, like, late that night, it's whenever I, I was like, oh, I am fucking sick. Right. And then it lasted, like, four more days, and then I'm still lingering. But right. it was worth it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Had a good time, good friends, yeah. you, Kurt, my family, mm-hmm. good pizza, good food. Amazing artwork. Amazing artwork, fun comedy. See? Yeah. It's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Shitty hotel, travel lodge, Mannheim Road, don't go there. Yeah. Otherwise, Chicago, A+. plus. Yeah, good job, Chicago. Good Keep, job. Keeping up the, the pace that you have, uh, we've grown accustomed to. From. Yeah. Look forward to going back. Yeah. Yeah. I would go back as well. Fuck yeah. I just would dress warmer and not walk around if uh, if it's uh, below zero. Yeah. yeah I'd maybe uh, I'd maybe invest in a scarf next Ooh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cover up my face a little. Because yeah. my face hurts. My nose hairs were like breaking off from the brittle cold. My lungs were burning. Yeah. yeah I'd safely say that. Mm-hmm. They burned from the cold. That's not a good sign. <laughs> no. All right. That's Chicago. This is us. It's late. Yeah. This is a long This was show. a long one. We're sorry, guys. We are sorry. Just gave you the play-by-play, though. Fuck yeah. You wanted to know. You shouldn't have asked if you didn't yeah. want it. This will prevent me from having to draw a comic about it, like I thought about uh, doing. And now I'm not going to. And I wasn't going to anyway. No. So, well, then I will. Okay. That's <laughs> what. Uh, I probably will. Uh, so, yeah. Let's, uh, let me pick a movie. Let's get the fuck out of here. Pick a movie. i got to go see my mom still. you got to go see your mom. i got to go to bed. Uh, we all got stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the movie that I'm going to pick for the next episode is uh, a movie that you've probably never heard of, is what I'm going to guess. But if you have, uh, yay, I it's guess. It's not in mm-hmm. theaters, is it? It's not in theaters. Okay. It's, on a, it's on a DVD. Okay. I was ready uh, to be It just came out on DVD uh, like a week ago. Uh, I got it from the Netflix, which is surprising, because it usually takes three months to get a oh, yeah. disc on there. That is timely. Yeah, it is timely. Uh, it's called Buried. Buried. Is that got Ryan Reynolds in it? That does have Ryan Reynolds I've, in it. I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. I kind of want to see that. Okay, then. Yeah. We're going to watch Buried, then. Sweet. All right. All right. And with that, uh, thank you, guys. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Welcome back yourself. Uh, yeah. You, you were in Chicago. I was in Chicago. <laughs> I missed a week. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've missed two. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I'll make up for it. All right. I've, I've, I've been taking all my homework home. Okay. Uh, I think I'll do okay on the test. All right. All right. Uh, so, yeah, buried next week. Go out, buy yourself some uh, Seven Psychopaths. Uh, go to Chicago when you get a chance. Listen to some Never Not Funny if you have to. Uh, don't stay at Travel Lodge. Don't, uh, don't stay at the Travel Lodge. Uh, eat some Chicago pizza. Uh, read some uh, comics by Kurt Dentz. Uh, Alright, we're out of here. Alright. Goodbye. You can subscribe to Gutter Trash at iTunes or directly at guttertrash.net. If you go to iTunes, please leave us a review. You can email us at eric at guttertrash.net or jason at guttertrash.net. For more info, you can find us on Facebook. Or you can go to seanborn.net or buyerbeware.guttertrash.net. Listen to our sister podcast, League Night, at league.guttertrash.net. Thank you for listening. Until next time.